This program contains true stories of rescues. All of the 911 calls you will hear are real. Whenever possible, the actual people involved have helped us reconstruct the events as they happened. Day in and day out in small towns and big cities throughout the country, firefighters routinely save lives of men, women, and children they've never met. But on February 3rd, 1991, in Rosemead, California, Chris Perez discovered that sometimes firefighters choose to go well beyond the call of duty. Can I go in there or something? Yeah. Uh, they must tell me to go through my gun. <laughs> So we seen Harvey over there in the mud, remember? We you guys... I got the bike out, but he fell, man. That afternoon, Chris had invited a few friends over to the house, including Amos Garcia. Chris went out, outside to go check on the dogs because they were kind of barking more than, you know, usual. I noticed the puppies were there, but Sparkless wasn't around. Let's go look for your mom. So I went out in the backyard. Sparklet! Looked down the hill, there was no sign of Sparklets. Sparklets! And, um... Kept going further back in the uh, in the back of the yard. There was a few bars missing from the drainage, and I noticed there was some barking from down there. Sparklets. Sparklets had fallen in there. Sparklet was trapped somewhere inside the steep 75-foot-long pipe. Chris's mom, Olivia, was just returning home from shopping with a friend. Sparklet fell down in the drain pipe in the back. We ran to the drain pipe, and I could hear her crying. I could hear her barking. Baby, I can hear you. Okay, come on. Come on. Come on, come on baby. Well, you're right in the middle there, Chris. My main concern was if she was bleeding, she had a broken leg, or, you know, who knows what happened, what kind of injury she could have had. Chris and a friend went down to the bottom of the pipe to see if they could get Sparklet out. You could still hear it barking Sparklet. and crying, but there was no sign of it. By then, the puppies were really yelping and screaming, and they were hungry, and they needed to be fed. I'm going to go in No, there. I don't think you... And then Christopher decided, I'm going to go in, and I said, that's all we need is the dog and Christopher to get stuck. I don't think you should go. He was determined to go inside there and go rescue the dog. Okay, careful. What's careful, are you okay? How you doing? I'm you okay? all right. Are you okay? Huh? We figured as long as we had that rope around him and we were on the other end of it, he'd be all right. You all right? Stop, stop, stop. Pull me up. Are you okay? We kind of were in a hurry to bring him back up. Are you okay? Okay, not too hard, you guys. Not too hard. We didn't know if he was stuck or if he just didn't go any further. There you go. Right on. Careful. 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 You got him. Careful. You got him. I'm going to go call the fire department now. I'm going to go call the fire department. All right. Department. All right. That's just too far around. down in there. Olivia called the nearest fire station and spoke with Captain Dennis Ortiz. My first response was I was just going to recommend she call the SPCA because we usually don't go out on animal calls. It's not worth putting a fireman in jeopardy, but she seems like a really nice lady. And it was just at that point we figured we'd better go out and take a look. But the firefighters remained ready to respond to any calls for emergencies. Hey 
How you doing? When the fireman arrived, I told him that I went down in there. They said I was crazy. And I said, well, you know, I'm trying to get my dog out of here. Good. It took them more than an hour to clear away all the mud blocking the pipe. As it was getting darker, uh, we didn't hear, have no response from her. I would call her and try everything, and she would, she would stop crying, and I couldn't even hear her breathing. Chris had an idea about bringing one of the puppies, one of her puppies, down. It's kind of slippy right here. Yeah, have one. Careful. Come on. Sparklets. Come on, Sparklets. Yeah, she, tr she struggled a little bit, but she can't do it. She wasn't responding, and, I, you know, she couldn't come. She couldn't turn around in there to get out. By the time animal control arrived with special equipment needed to try and reach the dog, Sparklet had been trapped for nearly six hours. Hey, guys, here. All right, our heroes are here. Yeah, right here. Okay, you've got six foot extensions on there, okay? You need to connect the head to it. The noose you have tension on there, and the rope will expand with the poles. All right. Rick McCone was one of the firefighters. That's all it would take. And put a pole in there and extend it up inside the, the hole that we had cleaned out as far as I could get it. Nice and slow. Yeah, okay, Sparklets. All right, I'm just about up to her, Rick. Let's see if I can try to get it around her head here, pull her out that way. I tried that three or four times right. to hook it around her head, but she kept pushing her head up against the top of the uh, culvert. All right, Sparklets, relax. I can pull Easy on that rope, oh, easy on that rope. Sparklet. All right, Rick, I got it hooked around her front leg. I'll try to pull her back a little bit. So I finally was able to hook it around her front leg. Let her go. There we go. Come on, Sparkle. I pulled her back probably about three or four feet, and I pushed the pipe up a little bit past her and kind of just prodded her down, you know, pulling as much as I could, sliding her down along the edge of the uh, pipe. There you go, girl. Go slower, okay, Rick. Sparklets. Yeah, there we go. It's all right, mamas. Yeah. Don't bite this man here. Okay, girl. Okay, Sparks. Okay, girl. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Everybody was just clapping and whistling. Oh, I gave her a big old kiss, big old muddy kiss, and that was happy. The Perezes know that their local firefighters went beyond the call of duty to save their dog. They did a wonderful job, and I was used to see them before, and I thought, well, you know, they're really brave, but now I, I think they're extra special people. For the next day, uh, the Perez family called to thank us again for our efforts. That was nice of them. They were real appreciative. That was kind of a good feeling. We, uh, we don't get thank yous very often. They were concerned. It you know, made me feel good. And um, as a little reward, you know, we offered them a puppy, and they, um, they accepted. The puppy Cinders has become a permanent resident of Los Angeles County Fire Station Number 4. It's nice to have a dog around. It kinda, this job can make you kind of hard at times. It's kind of insensitive, and it's kind of neat to see guys warm up to a dog. It's not a bad idea to have one in every station, I think. <laughs>